Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for joining us. This is the Heart of David International Ministries. I'm your pastor, Doc, Dr. Mark Dean. This is our Saturday evening service. It is August the 14th, 5 p.m. Pacific time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hallelujah. My subject today is fight for Christ's sake. In parentheses, I got persecution. Hallelujah. So we need to fight for Christ's sake. And you know you're going to be persecuted. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Let me go ahead and pray. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hopefully we won't be before you too long. Hallelujah. But we got to get the word out. We got to get it out with joy and gladness and excitement in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you today and we honor you. Lord, we come to you with great expectation, Father God. Lord, we want to be a help to the ministry. We want to be a help to the vision of the house, Lord. We don't want to be a hindrance to it, Father, in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, send forth this word with power. Send it forth with authority. Send it forth in righteousness and holiness in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the power of prayer. We thank you for the anointing in prayer. We thank you for the healing and the deliverance in prayer. We thank you for protection in prayer in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, let those who have ears, let them hear what thus said the Lord. Let them digest this word. Hallelujah. Let them apply it to their life, Lord. Apply it to their speech and to their walk and to their talk and what they see and what they hear, Father. Let us stand up boldly for Christ Jesus in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Stir up the anointing on the inside of us. Stir the gifts up on the inside of us. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory, we give you praise, and we give you all of the honor. In the name of Jesus, we bless you and we praise you today. We love you, we honor you, we magnify you, and we lift you up in the precious mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen again. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Again, our subject for this evening is fight for Christ's sake. In parentheses, we got persecution. So you know as you fight for Christ's sake, hallelujah, you're going to be persecuted. They're going to say that you lost your mind. They're going to say you're crazy. Listen to me and let me understand. Let me make this straight. I'm talking about you really, hallelujah, is fighting for Christ. I'm not talking about nobody off. I'm not talking about nobody who can't really hear from God. I'm talking about the ones who got the real relationship with Christ Jesus. God does everything in decency and order. Yes, I know we have to be bold in Christ Jesus, and he will give us that. Hallelujah, but you won't do it in disorder. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. I preached in December. It's called the order in God's house. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, and we're going to read verse 11. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. You know what? Let's go to Matthew chapter 5, and we're going to read verse 10 and verse 11. We're talking about fight for Christ's sake. And when you're fighting for Christ's sake, you know you are going to be persecuted. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. That's why you got to stay on your knees in prayer. That's why you got to get into the presence of God in prayer. Glory to your name. That's why you want to be in the presence of God as much as humanly as possible. God is your help. God is your strength. God is your all in all. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. 
We got to fight for Christ's sake and know we're going to be persecuted. God will give us strength to go through. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. In the good times and the bad times, God will give us strength to go, to go through. We're quick to fight for our children, for our job, and for promotion, and to get that degree. Hallelujah. But do you really put in that fight for Christ's sake? I said, do you really put in that fight for Christ's sake? Hallelujah. Is Christ really the head and the center of your life? Are you willing to be persecuted for Christ's sake? Because you're willing to be persecuted on your job to get a promotion. You're willing to be persecuted, hallelujah, to do a lot of things that's not godly. But you're going to do it and you are willing to go through it. But why aren't you willing to go through for Christ's sake? The persecution part of it. Hallelujah. Mm. Fight for Christ's sake. But know this, you are going to be persecuted. They don't even want preachers preaching the gospel, talking about it's too offensive. What's too offensive about the word of God? I say it all the time. If you are offended because of the Bible, you need to check yourself and how you live. You don't have to believe in the Bible. That's why it offends you. You don't have to believe in Christ Jesus. That's why it offends you. That's why you don't believe in the Holy Ghost. We're speaking in other tongues, and that's why, mm, glory to God, it offends you. When the, when the Bible, when the word offends somebody, that means they are wrong. There's an old song to go out there to say, hey, I know the Bible is right, and somebody is wrong. Who are you to come and try to change the words of God? Lord Jesus, I'm going to hit this quick and I'm going to move on because I want to stay on my subject. Be careful of these other translations. Uh, this is my personal opinion. I, I got a good, I can tell you why. I, I, I don't think that you should be reading the NIB, the American Standard, and all this other stuff because they changed the content of the scripture. That's a whole nother subject, and I keep telling you I'll get to it later, but I really will. Hallelujah. We need the pure word of God. The pure word. When you have, when you have other translations, most of them are taking out the key words in the scripture and replacing it with another word that has nothing to do with the word that they replaced them with. I don't want to hear about, well, it's easy reading. The devil is a liar. I keep telling you, we didn't know how to read and we didn't know how to write, but we learned. And maybe, well, this is old English. We don't talk that way, but you better learn it. You better understand it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go back. Remember the subject. Fight for Christ's sake. Hallelujah. Persecution. Glory to your name. No, you're going to be persecuted for Christ's sake. No, they're going to dog you out for Christ's sake. They're going to tell you God ain't did it for you now. Are you sure there's a God? Oh, God ain't do it for you now, and you say you're living for God. Mm. God ain't done nothing for you now, and you still going to church, and you still paying tithes, and you still paying offering. you still giving your money to the church. Hallelujah. Whoo, glory to your name. It's called fight for Christ's sake. And listen, and you're going to be persecuted. It's persecution. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. First, uh, 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 Matthew chapter five, we're going to read verse 10 and verse 11. Hallelujah. And it says, blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and ye shall and and ye shall say all manner of evil against you. Falsely, for my sake. Let me read verse 11 again. I stumbled through that. Blessed are ye 
when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Now he said in verse, let's go up to verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness. Hallelujah. Blessed are they who are persecuted for righteousness sake for the kingdom of heaven. So blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness. If you live in righteousness, I mean, you really live in righteousness, you're doing all you can to live the word of God, to be like Christ, they are going to persecute you. They're going to dog you out. They're going to talk about you. Whoo! Glory to your name. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When you persecuted for righteousness sake. I'm not talking about you being persecuted because you committed to murder, because you committed to rape, because you committed to the theft or the arson. I'm talking about when you are persecuted for Christ's sake. You ain't done nothing wrong except preach the gospel. You ain't done nothing wrong except give people your testimony. You have not done anything wrong, glory to God, except witness the good news to people and they hate you, and they revile you. Hey, but you want to go to heaven, and you want to take everybody you can with you to heaven. You want everybody to know about the good news of Jesus Christ. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. So let's read verse 10 again, Matthew 5, chapter 5, verse 10. Blessed are they which are persecuted, for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When you're persecuted for righteousness sake, you know the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Let's get out, let's get something else straight. Being persecuted and living for Christ's sake, that does not mean that you're supposed to be poor. That don't mean that. Listen, I know that my ultimate uh, sacrifice, my ultimate blessing is up in heaven. I know that. But God said I can have this stuff down here on earth. If I am a child, hallelujah, of the most high God, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, why Woo! would I not get everything that God has for me in the life to come, but also down here in this life? I expect to get everything that God has told me that I can have on this life. I know there's no heaven on earth, but God will bless me. Hallelujah. Mm. I will have peace on earth as much as peace is possible here on earth. You won't have to worry about anything once you get to heaven. But we're here in the flesh on earth, and we have to go through stuff. Even though we saved and even though we love God and even though we, we live for him, there are certain things, hallelujah, that we have to go through. But God said I can have everything that I'm supposed to have here on earth. Don't wait until you get to heaven. And that's good. Go ahead and do it. Hallelujah. But God said you're supposed to have everything that you need down here on earth. See, I found out something in this. I found this out in my personal life. Sometimes you got to stop saying that's good enough. Listen, it ain't good enough. God told you to excel. When you start saying that's good enough, hallelujah, that's when you start settling. It ain't nothing wrong with you saying that's good enough for the time being. But after a while, glory to God, I said after a while, Hallelujah, you should be looking to getting more and, 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 and doing more. You, you should be looking to get out of your studio apartment into an apartment. And after you get into your one-bed apart, apartment or two-room apartment, you need to look for your own home. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Ain't nothing wrong with catching the bus. I caught the bus. Hallelujah. But at some point in time, you should be able to say, Lord, 
You're going to bless me with my car. You're going to bless me enough to where I can buy my own car. You're going to bless me enough where I don't need a co-signer. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. You're going to bless me to where I can buy my own home. Hallelujah. You're going to bless me. Hallelujah. Where I won't have to worry about finances the way that I'm worrying about them right now. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Lord Jesus. Hey, glory to your name. Remember the subject. Fight for Christ's sake. Hallelujah. Persecution. Child of God, you are going to be persecuted. That's just the bottom line. Why? Because the devil hates you. He ain't worried about nobody hypocriting, half-stepping, lying, stealing, cheating. They in adultery. They in homosexuality. They in every, some of everything. They ain't even trying to live, right? They don't have a relationship with Christ. I'm talking to all those who got a relationship with Christ. I'm talking to all those who want to love God, and they hate it when they miss the mark. You hate it when you got sin on you. You hate it when you got sin in you. You hate it when you battling in your mind and the devil trying to bring all these crazy perverted thoughts and you got to cast them out. Hallelujah. You want your heart right. You want, my God, you want it pure in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Matthew chapter 5, verse 10 and 11. We're going to stay there for a minute. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Verse 11. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. That's the key word. When they speak falsely against you. Hallelujah. For my sake. Hallelujah. When they speak falsely against you for Jesus' sake, they don't like you. They don't like what you preach. They don't like your lifestyle because you really are trying to live right. They don't like your speech because you ain't cussing and swearing all the time. They don't like what you do. Well, why you can't like that? Well, got too much stuff in there. I don't want to see that. Well, it's just a movie. Well, it's just a movie. Yeah, but I don't need to see that, and I don't need to hear that. I'm doing my best, hallelujah, to live for Christ Jesus. Glory to your name. I'm going to do it with joy, and I'm going to do it with gladness, even though I got to fight for Christ's sake, and I know I'm going to be persecuted. There's a difference between you being persecuted and you did it, and you just doing it. But when you know you're being persecuted for Christ's sake, at least you know you're doing something right. Hallelujah. Because the devil wouldn't waste his time with you if you were not doing something right. He would not try to discourage you. He would not try to embarrass you. He trying to bring up stuff you did 20, 30, and 40 years ago. Hallelujah. Hey, listen. Glory to your name. But now... You and are the army of the Lord. Now you in the special forces of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now you like the mission impossible for the Lord. Hallelujah. You in the ghost protocol, so to speak, for Christ Jesus. They are going to persecute you for Christ's sake. Well, you know, he did this 10 years ago. And, and, and if, if he was really right, why did he do it? Maybe he did it, maybe he didn't, and, and everybody want to start rumors. You got half truths on, on story. The story may be true, but the way you saying it and the way you explaining it, you know you're totally off, and you know you're totally wrong. Hallelujah. Verse 11 in chapter, Matthew chapter 5, blessed are Ye, when men shall revile you, men shall revile you, that means men hate you, hallelujah, and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely. When they're saying all manner of evil against you falsely, that's a good time to praise the Lord. 
That is a good time to worship the Lord. That is a good time to say hallelujah. That is a good time to get into the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. No, we living for Christ. We know we're going to be persecuted. And sometimes we don't understand. Lord Jesus, I'm serving you. You know I'm serving you. You know for a fact I'm doing the best I can. Why are you allowing people to persecute me? Hallelujah. I said, why are you allowing people to persecute me? Glory to your name. Glory, glory, glory to your name. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Why are you allowing people to persecute me? Hallelujah. Father God, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. I want strength. Hallelujah. I want strength. Hallelujah. I want the strength to go through when I'm being persecuted. Hallelujah. I want the strength to fight for Christ's sake. Even when I'm in a room alone, I feel like there's 10,000 demons coming up on me. And it's just me. But I got to know I'm fighting for Christ's sake. And the Lord will fight for me. The Lord will come and take care of me. Hallelujah. I shall not be moved. Hallelujah. Through thick and thin, I will not be moved. Glory to your name. I said I will not be moved. See, I love Jesus. And, and it, look, Jesus ain't done everything that I asked him to do because I probably didn't need it. I was heartbroken because in my heart, sometimes I just knew this was the Lord. And it didn't come to pass. Lord, I didn't pray about it. And Lord, I didn't fast to the Father. Lord, I really thought I heard you. Hallelujah. How can I be this wrong? How can I be this off? How can I miss it this much so bad when I'm thinking I'm hearing from you? Hallelujah. Now your heart is broke. You can't believe that you didn't understand what God was telling you. And you just knew God was doing it. Let's get something straight right now. God will give you anything that you ask for according to his will, not according to yours. I said, according to his will. That's what we got to understand. We praying for stuff. God don't want us to have it. And sometimes he'll let you go through. Sometimes he'll give it to you. And then once he give it to you, you say, Lord, you knew I wasn't supposed to have it. So why did you give it to me? You should have just let me cry when you didn't give it to me. You should have just let me have my little pity party for a few minutes. and Because that's what I would have rather you have done than you giving it to me. And I got to go through this because I've got to. I always want to pray, Lord Jesus, according to your will and according to your way. I want to seek you with my whole heart. I want to love you with my whole heart, Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So when we come there, verse 11, blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. When they speak, mm, when they shall say all manner of evil against you falsely, sometimes you know they lie and you just got to sit there and say, Lord, you take care of it. Because sometimes when you try to go take care of it, you don't do nothing but make it worse and make it look like you're trying to cover up something that you ain't even did. So sometimes we just got to be still and know that he is God. He said, I will be exalted in the earth, and I will be exalted in the heaven. That's Psalm 46, chapter 46, verse 10. Let's go on over there and just look at it. Let's read it. Hallelujah. Psalms 46, 10. and verse 10. Whoo, glory to your name. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathens. 
I will be exalted in the earth. He said, be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. I will be exalted among the heathens. I will be exalted in the earth. So when you understand, sometimes we got to be still. And we got to know that he is God. Hallelujah. I said, we got to know that he is God. Glory to your mighty name. Glory to your name. You got to make sure whoo, when you fight for Christ's sake, people, all men will speak evil, speak all manner of evil against you for Christ's sake. You know, you know you didn't do it. You wasn't even in town. That ain't even your cup of tea. Hey, but they said you did it. They said you was there. They lying to the police about you did it. They lying to the police and your family about you did it. You was there. I saw them. They ain't seen nobody because you're on the other side of the country. Visiting family, taking a vacation, doing something on business. But they want to persecute you. Hallelujah. For Christ's sake. Mm. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Remember the subject, fight for Christ's sake. But no, we're going to have persecution. Hallelujah. We're going to have persecution. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. I said glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. We must know. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Because if you fight for Christ's sake, hallelujah, you know you're going to be persecuted. But you got to make sure that you keep a pure heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Verse 8, Matthew chapter 5, verse, verse 8. This is where we talk about the Beatitudes, but go up to verse 8. And it says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Because blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Mm. Hallelujah. I said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Hallelujah. That's why. Mm. In verse 11, you'll be able to stand when it said, blessed are they when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. The reason why you can endure and the reason why you trust God because Blessed are the pure in heart because you got a pure heart and you know you're going to see God. You ain't going to let nobody keep you from making it into heaven. You're not going to allow your kids to do it. You're not going to allow your wife to do it. You ain't going to allow your mom and daddy to do it. You ain't going to allow that job or that promotion or the job or that money that you're supposed to be making. You're not going to allow that to stop you. You got your eyes fixed on the Holy Ghost fixed on Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. I said glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 It's called the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. You got to have the joy of the Lord when you fight for Christ's sake. The joy of the Lord will allow you and help you to go through the persecution when all manner of men will speak evil against you falsely. We're talking about when they're speaking against you falsely. <clears throat> they heard a rumor, and it's a reliable rumor, the person that they heard it from, and they said this and that. Hallelujah. And some of these people are supposed to be your friend. Hallelujah. But they're not friends enough to come to you and say, hey, I'm not trying to get into your business, but this is what I heard. You sitting up here, well, I ain't got nothing to do with that. But you, you calling yourself friends. Now, we know some people can't approach because they get offended every time you say something to them. But if somebody, your friend, and you know you have mutual respect for each other, you got to say, look, this is what I heard. I'm telling you what's out there. I don't want to hear nothing from nobody. I'm coming to you. 
Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. You got to always continue to pray. You got to always continue to seek the Lord. Remember the subject today was, I just want to love the Lord with my whole heart and teach my children. So when you're loving the Lord with your whole heart and you teaching your children, you must, they must also know you got to fight for Christ's sake. But listen to this. On the other hand, you got to know that you're going to be persecuted. You got to know that you're going to be persecuted. Hallelujah. And people will speak evil against you falsely. They know it's false. They trying to ruin your reputation. They trying to embarrass you. They trying to embarrass your family, your children, your mama, your daddy, your siblings, your nieces, your nephews. Hallelujah. All oh, hallelujah. Because mm, they don't like what you preaching. They don't like how you live. Hallelujah. And they want to make sure before you get, a, a, I don't know, a big name out there, whatever it is, they want to stop you. It ain't the big name preachers. It's the local ones that they really worried about because those are the ones that's in the community. Those are the ones that you could touch and see tangibly, not just on TV. It ain't nothing wrong with being on TV and Zoom and Facebook. I, I'm on there myself. That ain't what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But you got to go to church. Go to the church. Go to the house of God. I don't care if they have it. If you got a church building, I don't care if it's in somebody's basement, somebody's garage, somebody's front room, hallelujah, somebody's backyard. But assemble yourselves together the more as you see that day approaching. That is Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Read it for yourself. Hallelujah. I know fight, uh, fight for Christ's sake. I know I'm going to be persecuted. Listen. Sometimes be persecuted in your own home for living for Christ. Sometimes your spouse don't understand why you're doing all this. They saying it don't take all that. Do you really know? Have you really uh, fasted and prayed? Because if you are a wife of God, gave your husband a vision, you need to pray for your husband that vision and that you catch the vision and that your household catch the vision. You don't sit up here and fight him every step of the way because I just don't see it. The Lord ain't told me nothing. Well, hey, you don't, even if he ain't told you, if you know he's saved, you know he listened to God, you know he got a prayer life, hallelujah, you need to say, I believe God talking to you. It's just like when women, they going to church, their husband ain't saved nothing. Some of them getting beat every time they come home from church. Hallelujah. You, there's a whole lot of different fights that you have to go through for Christ's sake. And it's called persecution. And it's hard, especially when you're getting persecuted by people that you love the most, meaning your wife or your husband, your family, your close family members. Hallelujah. Sometimes you're getting persecuted by folks up in the church. They ain't, my God, they ain't praying for you. I'm just telling you this so we can pray for them. No, you tell them so you can gossip. You telling them so the rumor can start to go and maybe you can get that person to leave the church or, or be set down so you can take over that position. You want to make sure you have a pure heart. You got to keep your heart pure because people are going to say things against you falsely. Some of it is, most of it is going to be intentional. When they saying falsely here, they know they lying on you. They know you don't do that. They know you didn't have nothing to do with what was going on at all. They know you wasn't there. They know you don't get into that, even though they don't like you. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. You can be persecuted on the job sometimes. Sometimes your, your boss is a devil and they just don't like you because they know you got a standard for Christ Jesus. 
anybody that's living for God, they have a standard. Their standard is based on the word of God, not on whether you're going to give me a promotion, not on whether you're going to give me a raise, not on whether I'm in the click or not the click. And listen, that even goes to church. My relationship with Christ has nothing to do whether what click that I'm in. I mean. Listen, my God, help me today, Jesus. Your job is to have a pure heart so when people lie on you, when people just say all manner of, of false things against you, you got to keep a pure heart and you still got to love them. One of the hardest things for people to do, for saints to do, is when God tells you to pray for your enemies. Well, Lord, you know what they did to me. And they've been doing it over and over. And you know what they said about me. And they keep lying on me. Lord, now they're lying on my children. Hallelujah. You know when it comes to your baby, hey, you, hey, Lord, hallelujah. Glory to God. We fighting up here in the church. We fighting up here in the pulpit. We fighting at the altar. Hallelujah. But you got to keep a pure heart. That's why when we just read Psalm 46 and 10, when he said, be still and know that I am God, I will be exalted among the heathens and I will be exalted in the earth. That is ha having a pure heart. That is knowing you're fighting for Christ's sake. But you know you're going to be persecuted. Sometimes your persecution and people want to get after you or really hurt you. They go after what you love the most in the natural. That is your children. Woo! That is your wife. That's your husband. That's your mama. That's your daddy. That's big mama. That's big daddy. Hallelujah. That's your favorite auntie. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Woo! Mm. Sometimes the thing you love the most, you need to let go. The love thing you love the most is your job. And they didn't lie on you and you got fired and you cried and you don't understand why they they didn't uh 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 they fired you. They don't know why that they uh uh listened to that person because that person always in mess and they didn't listen to you and you ain't never lied to them and you got the best attendance record around, you get your work done. Yeah, that's because it's the devil coming against you, the devil and them working against you. Hallelujah. A lot of times we have a job, and the reason why we keep the job, it ain't because we so good. It's be, and even though you got devils and demons coming after you, it's just the mercy of God. God got you there. He's going to keep you there, and you there for a reason. Maybe your testimony is, is just doing your job. Maybe your testimony is them just watching you, how you do, and how you react. Hallelujah. That is your testimony and that is your witness to him. Hallelujah. Remember, slow to speak and quick to listen. A lot of times we talk too much, too fast, everything else. Hey, glory to God. But we got to understand for Christ's sake, fight for Christ's sake, knowing we're going to be persecuted. Hallelujah. <laughs> knowing that you're going to suffer for Christ. Knowing that you're going to be persecuted. Hallelujah. Let's go over to Acts. Hallelujah. 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 Let's go over to Acts. Let's read verse 15 and verse 16. Acts chapter 9, verse 15 and verse 16. Woo! Glory to God. This is talking about the suffering for Christ. Hallelujah. When you suffer for Christ, you know God is making you. Yeah, you're crying about it. Hallelujah. And yeah, you're praying to the best of your ability. Hallelujah. And you you trying to say this is a fast. You ain't fasting to get to the Lord. You just fasting because you don't, you don't know what to do. You just ain't eating. It ain't a fast. You just ain't eat. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Let's read Acts chapter uh, 9, verse 15 and 16. And this is part of the suffering for Christ that you got to do. Verse 15. 
But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So listen, he told you in verse 15, but the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. So when you go his way and you are a chosen vessel unto him, knowing you're going to be persecuted. You got to know that when God has called you to do a specific work that he wants you to do, know that you're going to be persecuted. And sometimes the persecution come from the person that you love the most. And you never thought they would betray you. You never thought they would do that to you, that they would lie on you, that they would try to set you up and embarrass you. Hallelujah. So let's read verse, I'm going to read all of verse 15 and 16. Acts chapter 9, verse 15 and 16. But the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. Be uh, to bear my name before the Gentiles, and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Hallelujah. So he just told you, I'm going to show you great things that you must suffer for my name's sake. Hallelujah. Because if God told you, mm, hallelujah, mm, to bear his name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, so now you're going before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. Why? Because you are chosen to do that. But he also said in verse 16, for I will show him how great, I'm sorry, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So when you're suffering for Christ, no God has gotten something for you. When you are suffering for him, no, you are a chosen vessel. But your job is not to give up on Christ. You got to fight for Christ's sake, knowing you're going to be persecuted. Hallelujah. They going to lie. No, ain't nothing worse than a lie. You can't get a lie back. That lie will follow you the, your whole life. Hallelujah. I was just watching some documentaries and and and. This stuff happened 20, 30, 40 years ago, and they still coming back. Well, you know what? You know, you still trying to uh, 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 tell them to explain it to them. Hallelujah. You got people in there that's psychologists and psychiatrists and all this and that, and they saying this and that or whatever, and then they trying to come and tell you, well, what do you think? Hey, you the one who answered all the questions. What you asking me for? I told you what happened. I told you what I what was going through my mind. What else do you want to know? I heard one person on a documentary said, after this one, I ain't talking about it no more. Period. 20 years later, they still talking about it. 30 years later, they still talking about it. Hallelujah. When somebody runs for the president and most of them 50, 60, 70 years old, they going back to what you did back in high school. And if you're still doing it, that's the problem. But if you ain't doing it no more and you did it in college, you don't do it no more. Why are you still bringing it up? I thought we were talking about mercy and forgiveness. Because when you fight for Christ's sake, knowing you're going to be persecuted, hallelujah, you got to know, you got to show mercy. You have to show forgiveness. No, it ain't going to happen overnight. And if you think about it too much, you will cry about it now, 30 years later. But you, in order for you to get to heaven, in order to you for, uh, 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 to fight for Christ's sake, knowing you're going to be persecuted, you must have forgiveness in your heart. You must have mercy in your heart. God has shown you so many times how much mercy he has shown you and given you and how many times he has forgiven you. Hallelujah. You need to do the same as well. Glory to your name. So now when you know you are a chosen person, a chosen generation, knowing you're going to be persecuted because God has something great in your life to do. 
He has called to ministries to do great things for the body of Christ worldwide. And you are going to be persecuted. That ain't just the leadership. The leadership get persecuted more than anybody because he got to have that, that vision. He got to get it out. He got to get it in your spirit. But if you alone, hallelujah, and you got the vision on the inside too, and you're trying to do all that God has called the leadership to do, your, the church to do, the vision of the house to do, you're going to be persecuted too. We want to be right. And we want to know when we being persecuted and we crying and tears and snot running down our eyes, we may be crying, but we know the joy of it is we're being persecuted for Christ's sake, not for something that we did and it caught up to us. Lord, we're asking for mercy. Give me mercy and I want to show mercy. Lord, I'm asking you to forgive me so I can forgive. I don't want to hold no grudge and no be envious and strife over nobody. Just like you have forgiven me and gave me mercy. I want to forgive and show mercy. I didn't say I was going to hang out with you. I didn't say we were going to go have dinner and hang out and have a barbecue with our family. I said I need to forgive you and have mercy. That don't mean you go hang out. But that don't mean you 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 uh uh talk about them and and be ready to fight every time you see them. Hallelujah. They may have happened when you may have been that way when it first happened. But after a while, once God starts showing you how to show mercy and have forgiveness, God will show you the love for that person. Remember, I said earlier, one of the hardest things to do is when God is telling you to pray for your enemy. When God is telling you to fast for your enemy. Listen, it's also hard. When God telling you, go tell your enemy what thus said the Lord is. They may not receive it because they think you just talking and they think you just don't like it. Hallelujah. But listen, if they got any kind of God in them, they'll step back and say, okay, hold on. Hold on. Let, let, let me see, Lord. I don't want no devil coming talking to me. Sometimes your, your number one a rival, your number one nemesis, once they get past that, sometimes it be, they become best friends. That is a testimony that, look look at it. Some people hated each other, couldn't stand each other, ready to fight every time they see each other. And I'm talking about up in church. So now once they actually sat down and had a talk, without their uh, egos in the middle of it, and they both came with a humble spirit. They were able to talk. Now, some of them came to a mutual agreement. God bless you. I don't like you. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, you know, go do what God tell you to do. He tell me to pray for you. I pray for you. And they go about their way, but they have a, they don't have that hatred. But some people actually hated each other, and they had to talk. Hallelujah. And after the talk, they actually became best friends. They actually tell everybody that I hated him. He was my number one rival. I couldn't stand him. I would have killed him if, if, if I could have had a chance to do it. But now, whoo, and they'll tell you, it, it was a devil. It was a devil. The devil trying to keep certain people from connecting because of the power that they have. And sometimes they're supposed to be connected. Hallelujah. And when the devil comes in to keep you from somebody, you need to sit back and pray. Okay, Lord, why am I mad at this person? Why I don't like this person? Oh, well, remember he did this to you 20 years ago. Okay, that's 20 years ago. But Lord, let me truly have a forgiving heart. Let me truly show mercy and have mercy. I want to show mercy just like you've shown me mercy over the last 30 years. I want to forgive just like you have forgiven me and all my tests and trials that I didn't get right. I want to have that, that kind of mercy and forgiveness. I want to be able to throw it into the sea of forgetfulness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember, fight for Christ's sake, but know you're going to be persecuted. Sometimes you'll be persecuted in your own church. And sometimes as the pastor, 
people in your church going to come against you. And you know God gave you this vision. Those are the devils. Those are the ones that's planted in the church. Remember, you got the weed and the tear. And sometimes they have to grow together. Because if you grow the tear up, it's going to take the weed up. So you have to wait until the harvest to pluck them out. Hallelujah. Whoa, glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for great things that you are doing in our life, Father God. I thank you that we are a chosen people. I thank you that we are a chosen generation. I thank you that you have called us to preach this word. Hallelujah. To the Gentiles and to the kings and to all of Israel. I thank you that you have called us to preach this word around the world, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord. I just don't want to do it on Facebook and Zoom, and that's good, and, and, and Twitter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I just, look, I want to go there. Hallelujah. You give me the ability to go there to preach your word. I don't care if it's, at, in, if it's in Afghanistan. I don't care if it's in Nigeria, uh, uh, Lagos, wherever it is. I don't care. Hallelujah. I don't care, Father God. I don't care if it's in Ethiopia or Iran or Iraq or India or Japan. I want to preach it with boldness. I know if you tell me to go there, I'm covered in the blood of Jesus. And not one life will be lost when we go and preach. But people will be saved and people will be delivered in the name of Jesus. Let us do it with boldness. Let us do it with joy and let us do it with gladness. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. We got to have the boldness in Christ Jesus in order to preach his word in the midst of your enemies, even though it may cost you your life. See, we talk about Daniel in the lion's den. But if he threw you in the lion's den, do you have that much faith? Or they're about to throw you in the lion's den. And you say, wait, wait, wait. Okay, I, I, I won't say that no more. I won't preach the gospel no more. Are you like uh, the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and the Billigan, mm. where he said, hey, our God will deliver us. But listen to this. They said, even if he decide not to, God is still God. Hey, glory to God. Even if he decides not to deliver us out of the fiery furnace, mm, whoo, glory to God. Mm, God is still God. And I will not denounce his name. Hallelujah. I will not serve pagan gods, even if it's costing me my life. We talk about it. But I really pray, I pray that I'll never have to be in that position. But I also pray that, Lord, I want to be able to stand looking in the eyes of death. That's it. Now, look, look, listen. The stuff that they had to face even over there now, when they beheading Christians, they're a genocide whole communities and whole tribes because they believe in Jesus. And the devil is trying to rid them out. Genocide is to wipe the people, their tribes off the face of the earth. That's what it is. But if you fight for Christ's sake, no, you're going to be persecuted. We got to know we're going to be persecuted. And we have to be able to stand when we are persecuted for Christ's sake. My God, when we are persecuted for Christ's sake. Mm, glory to your name. When we are persecuted for Christ's sake. People say, all you got to do is not say this. All you got to do is not do this. But if you give up on Christ and not do that, that means you have denied him. So even if they do kill you, hell is going to be your home. If you kill me, I'm not getting rid of Christ. 
I'm going to say Jesus all day long until you cut off my head. I'm not going to sit up there and say, okay, okay, I denounce Christ. Now, Jesus ain't really God, and they still cut your head off anyway. Lord Jesus. All I'm saying is this. The church, the saints of God, the leaders in the church, be strong. We want to be strong no matter what comes up against us. Listen, we want to go through persecution even if it is our fault. It's better to go through it when it ain't your fault and you know you're doing it for Christ's sake, but then you know it's bad, it's really bad when you're going through persecution because you did it and you just got to weather the storm. God will still help you. You have repented and God will help you through it. But hey, look, look, trust me. I know from a personal standpoint, it's different from being persecuted when you've been persecuted from Christ and then you persecuted because of something that you did. That still don't mean that you leave Christ. That means you just got to endure. And look, whatever the Lord decides to deliver you, hallelujah, then you'll know once he delivers you, you, look, you, look, if you ain't never had no problem praying before, you show sure enough don't have no problem praying now. If you didn't ever have no problem fasting, you show sure enough don't have a problem fasting now. If you've never had a problem seeking the Lord, you show sure enough don't have a problem seeking him now. Glory to your name. Woo! Glory to your mighty name. I encourage you, church. I encourage you, body of Christ. I encourage you, leadership. Hallelujah. Get back to praying. Hallelujah. My God, I'm really going to have to preach on uh, spiritual civil war because I keep bringing it up. Hallelujah. When are we going to come together as a body of Christ? Hallelujah. We worried about stuff that don't mean nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worried about this, that, or whatnot. We got to come together so we can be unified. The reason why the church can't, don't have the power, the, the church is not unified. I'm talking about the Pentecostal church in God and Christ, apostolic, Baptist, and me, uh, uh, Methodist, whatever it is. Let's come together, hallelujah, and fight for the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus. The reason why these devils are getting, are tearing churches up, are tearing the lives of these preachers up, because they don't have a prayer life, they don't have a covering. Let's get something straight. Hallelujah. As the body of Christ come together, hallelujah, your congregation is supposed to pray for the church, for the vision, for the leadership. The leadership praying for the congregation, for the uh, vision of the house and all that. Just like you want the pastor to pray for you, you need to pray for your pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want, you want your pastor to pray for you strength? You pray for your pastor that he have the strength, that he don't get caught up in that, and that God give him the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding to rightly divide the word of truth, that the gifts be stirred up in him so he can lead and guide the way that God has called him and anointed him to do, that he won't be distracted, hallelujah, in the vision that God has put in his heart or put in his spirit. Hallelujah. You want to make sure that Jesus is truly the head of your life, and you want to make sure that you love God and you seek God with your whole heart. Now we're talking about the fight mm. Ooh, for Christ's sake, but no, you're going to be persecuted. Hallelujah. Let's go back to uh, Acts 9, chap uh, chapter 9. Let's read verse 15 and 16 again. Hallelujah. But the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So when he's talking up here, the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. You want to be a chosen vessel unto God. Hallelujah. Mm to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. You want to go before God to bear his name before the Gentiles, before kings and the children of Israel. Really, he's talking about the world. 
when he's talking about the Gentiles, he's talking about the world. Hallelujah. When he's talking about different kings, he's talking about the world. And then he said, and the children of Israel. He said, and the children of Israel. You got to preach this gospel around the world. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Verse 16, Matthew 9 and 16. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my namesake. God had to show uh, Paul so many great things that he was, because he was doing great things, you got to suffer great things. That's what you got to understand, preacher. God have you doing a great thing in the body of Christ? No, you are going to be persecuted. You are going to suffer great things. Hallelujah. In order to do great things in the body of Christ, no, you're going to suffer great things. Great things in the body of Christ, meaning you're going to suffer great things. Hallelujah. It's a way to keep you humble. It is a way to let you know that it's only God that allows me to do this. That is one way for God to, and he told Paul, I got to show you great some great things that you're going to suffer because I got to send you to the world. I got to send you to the Gentiles. I got to send you to kings. I got to send you to the children of Israel. And I got you doing great things, and you also will suffer great things. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Understand something. By you doing that, I told you, you are going to be hated. Hallelujah. I said hated. Glory to your name. Mm. Let's go, and we're about to leave in a minute. We're going to go, but understand something. Listen, I encourage you to listen to this message at least three times this week. Listen to it all. Hey, glory to your name. Hallelujah. Remember, if you got questions, email me. Glory to God. Either on the website or my personal email. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. This is when they talk about you being hated for Christ's sake. Matthew 10, chapter 10, verse 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth until the end shall be saved. That's what he's talking about. You're going to be hated, but you got to endure until the end. Because even here in this life, God is going to bless you. Hallelujah. Don't just wait for the ultimate prize up in heaven, which that is it. But he said he's going to bless you down here on earth. Yes, you're going to be persecuted, but I'm still going to bless you. Hallelujah. Yes, they're going to speak all manner of evil against you, but I'm still going to persecute you. I have called you to be a chosen person. Hallelujah. For my name's sake, I've called you to go to the Gentiles. I've called you to go to kings. I've called you to go to my children, which are the children of Israel. And understand this as you do that, and I use you in great things. When your shadow can heal, folks, huh? glory to God. My God, I got to make sure, Paul, that you stay humble. That you know you are a chosen vessel. I have chosen you as that chosen vessel. And you need to know that it's only me that allows you to do that. Hallelujah. It is only me to give you that wisdom and that knowledge and that understanding. Hallelujah. You will be hated and you will suffer many things. But he tells you right here in Matthew 10 and 22, you have to endure until the end. Hallelujah. Mm. And you shall be saved. You got to endure it till the end. Paul said, I fought the good fight of faith. You need to fight until the last day of your, until the last day on earth. Hallelujah. You got to fight it now. Hallelujah. You got to understand. You got to fight for Christ's sake, but know you're going to be persecuted. And knowing even though you're going to be persecuted so God can keep you humble, he is still going to bless you. He will still bless you and bring you out. 
Hallelujah. Then you got to go through another trial because God has used you and now the devil's coming after you. The devil's trying to break you. The devil's trying to kill you. The devil wants to embarrass you before he kills you. So because you got a relationship with Christ, you love God, you're seeking God, God can keep you out of a lot of things, a lot of out of a lot of situations. People are trying to set you up so you can look bad in the public. People trying to set you up so you can look bad in the church, bad to your wife, bad to your children, bad on the job. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. But we're talking about fighting for Christ's sake. And you know you're going to be persecuted for Christ's sake. That means you are on the right track. Hallelujah. You ain't the only one going through. Remember that. It feels like you won't make it through this test. You won't make it through this trial, but God is still with you. And that's when you really come to the point where you say, Lord Jesus, I, I surrender all to you. I don't know what to do. I don't know what I did wrong. And even if you did do something wrong, you said, Lord, I don't know what to do. I did do wrong. How can you get me out of this? I surrender all that I have to you. I surrender my heart and I surrender my mind. I surrender my spirit. I surrender my life to you, Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I surrender my life to you. Hallelujah. So to fight for Christ's sake. Knowing God is going to help you for fight for Christ's sake, knowing you got the boldness in Christ to fight, but understand you will be persecuted. I said, understand you will be persecuted. Hallelujah. I encourage you to leave your comments. Hallelujah. On YouTube, Facebook, you know, Zoom, whatever it is. Hallelujah. If you got any questions, remember to email me at hodim1117 at gmail.com or at hodim.org. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. We got to fight for Christ's sake. Again, I'm talking to the church. I'm talking to the men of God. I'm talking to the saints of God. Stand up and fight for the church. Stand up and fight for Christ. Use the Bible. Use the word of God. Rightly divide the word of truth. Do sound doctrine. Hallelujah. What I've been telling you all alone, let's go to Luke 18 and 1. And we're going to talk about men must always to pray and not to faint. And that is the problem in the body of Christ. Men are not praying the way we're supposed to. You faint because you got a test in a trial because somebody said they didn't like you, because somebody said they didn't like your sermon, because somebody said they didn't like what you wore. Come on. Hallelujah. Luke 18, chapter 18, verse 1. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. You got to always to pray and not to faint. Hallelujah. Let's go to Luke 21 and 36. And this is what we got to understand as well. Hallelujah. He said, watch ye therefore and pray always. See, we got to watch ye therefore and pray always that we be accounted worthy to escape mm. all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. All these things that should come to pass. Men must watch and pray so we can escape all these things that should come to pass. What should we need to escape? We got a pandemic. A pandemic, epidemic, pandemic worldwide with this corona. God will keep you. God will protect you. Hallelujah. For all these things that's going to come upon the earth. And you will be, be able to stand before the Son of Man, which means you were fighting for the faith of Christ Jesus. You did not give up. You did not backslide during the time you were being persecuted, during the time of your test and your time. 
Yes, you may have cried and you may have said, Lord, I don't know why you let me do this. And Lord, I don't understand. Hallelujah. Lord, I just need you to help me. I don't know what to do. I give up. When I say I'm giving up, I'm giving up on me and I'm giving me to you so you can take care of it. I've tried to do everything. I, I, I tried, Lord. I've been praying. And I've been fasting. I've been reading. I've been seeking you. I give everything up to you. I mean, I give everything. I need you to order my steps. I need you to lead and guide me. Lord, I don't know what to do. Mm. And Lord, I got a family. I got a wife and children. They're looking at me to lead them into the right place in Christ Jesus. I can't do it without you, Lord. I need you to help me. Hallelujah. I don't mind going through for you, Lord, but I need you to help me. <laughs> when I look at my baby's face, when I look at my wife's face, Lord, they're looking at me for direction. I got to come to you, Jesus, to look to you from the direction. You are my head. I need to understand what's going on, Jesus. <laughs> Glory to your name. Hallelujah. I'm going to fight for Christ's sake. And I know this persecution is only because I have not taken down. I have not given up. And even when I didn't get everything quite right, I still came back and said, Lord, forgive me. Get me on the right track. I want to be real. I want to be right. I want to be real at home when ain't nobody with me. I want to be real at home when I'm flying by myself in a, in a hotel room. I still want to be real. Hallelujah. I want to be real when I don't think nobody's watching me. Hallelujah. Being faithful to your children meaning being faithful to your wife. Hallelujah. Good Lord Jesus, that's something totally, totally different. Hallelujah. You love your kids. You love your family. You look, you're going to think a hundred thousand times before you go commit adultery and cheat on your wife. You're going to think a hundred thousand times before you commit adultery and cheat on your husband. It ain't just between you and your wife. It ain't just between you and your husband. It is, be look, because it affects the kid. They looking at you, mama, how can you do that to daddy? They looking at daddy, how can you do that to mama? And then they see the pain on the other parent's face and the hurt. So now they get even more angry at you. And now you got to fix the family. It ain't going to be hard and it ain't going to be easy. I pray, Lord, that I'll never have to deal with adultery. I don't want to do it. I don't want my wife to do it. I, I don't want to do it. I don't want to have to deal with abuse and drugs. I, you know, we go through just being married because it's a man, it's a woman. Hallelujah. Men don't think like women. Women don't think like men. Hallelujah. I heard a preacher a couple of days ago, and he said when they first got married, his wife had to learn to let him make mistakes. Yeah, he said his wife had to learn to let him make mistakes. And once he made that mistake, he wasn't up in her face up in his face talking about, I told you, you should have listened to me. She just said, baby, we're going to do better next time. Hallelujah. Lord, that's another subject too. We're going to go ahead and go, but listen to me. I encourage you, hmm, increase your prayer life. Increase your life in reading the word. Most of all, well, the other thing, increase your life in living the word. Increase it in living your word, how you act and how you talk and how you walk. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Again, if you would like to speak to me, you can speak to me at HODIM1117 at gmail.com. Or you can go to the church website at HODIM.org. On both of those sites, you can, uh, 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 you can leave your... Uh, questions, statements, or prayer. If you want prayer, we're going to pray for you. We believe in the power of prayer. 
We believe in activating the word of God in the power of prayer. We got to pray with boldness. We got to pray with courage. We got to know, no, it ain't me praying that's going to get you healed. It's the God up in me that allows me to pray to you that the anointing will come upon you. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. We were just talking about suffering, suffering or getting persecuted for Christ. Hallelujah. Woo! When you are getting persecuted and you know it's only because you're serving God, that's the best time to, to joy and have joy and excitement because you're doing something right. Even though you don't know exactly what you're doing, you're doing something right because the devil wouldn't take his time to mess with you if you wasn't real, if you wasn't right. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. I do. Uh, encourage you to like <clears throat> and subscribe to my YouTube channel and my Facebook channel. Hallelujah. And they're both the heart of David International Ministry. Like and subscribe and share. Again, if you have any questions, I gave you the email. Email me. If you want prayer, email me. Hallelujah. If the Lord put it in your heart to give a love offering, you can do it at HODIM.org. Whatever the Lord tells you. Listen, saints. Mm. God is good. No, look, in spite of you, God is good. In spite of your mistakes, and we're talking about in spite of presumptuous sin. Sometimes you get to the point where you be like, well, I'm just going to do it. I don't care. Whatever I got to go through after that, I'm just going to go through it. Hallelujah. Then you do it. You, oh, Lord. Yeah, you don't want to get into that. I know we sin and come short of the glory of God, but that is no excuse for you to sin. It's not. We do our best to bring this body under subjection because the flesh and the spirit work daily. The flesh want to sin. The spirit man is saying no. That's why we do our best to get prayer in. That's why we do our best to read the Bible. That's why we do our best to fast. Hallelujah. That's a good way to bring them under your flesh under subjection. It's time to fast. I've been eating too much. I've been lying too much. I've been stealing too much. I've been fornicating too much. I've been getting into adultery too much. Hallelujah. I've been in conversations that I know for a fact I have not, I shouldn't have been in. I've been talking about my ex-husband. I've been talking about my ex-wife. I need help. It's done and over with. Lord, let me move on. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Listen to me. I look forward to seeing you Tuesday at, at 6 p.m. Pacific time for our corporate prayer. Our corporate prayer is only 15 to 30 minutes where we come together and pray as a body of Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to your mighty name. Hallelujah. If you would like to join this ministry, email me. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. God is good. Remember that. No matter what you're going through, God is going to bring you out. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. I look forward to hearing from you. Hallelujah. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I will see you Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific time. God bless you. Have a nice day. Hallelujah. Glory to your name.